Okay, welcome everybody. Um, second meeting is November 2022, and the Township Board of Trustees. We will start with introductions. I'll start myself. I'm Chris Meacher, I'm the chair of the board. To my right, Marilyn Boyer, Township Trustee. Colin Altman, Fire Chief. Cassie Lester, Bath Township Trustee. Rob Hoffman, Bath Township Trustee. George Powell, Yellow Springs President. Cindy Powell, Yellow Springs President. Uh, Lauren Schultz, Yellow Springs News. Jennifer Adams, Miami Township Resident. Yeah, we can have Miami Township, really good. Mm -hmm. Eric Sullivan, Fiscal Officer. Uh, third trustee, Mr. Hollister, won't be joining us this evening. Okay, we shall begin. We'll call the order at 5 o'clock. We'll, we'll ask for adoption of the minutes of October 26, which we cannot do because we don't have a third party here. So we'll move to November 7th, 2022. Is there a motion to adopt? Yes. I'll second that. Is there any further discussion regarding those minutes? Um, it looks good to me. How about you? Fine. Um, hearing no further discussion, may we vote please? Mr. Reacher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Now move to adopt payment of bills of 41,000, almost even, 18 cents. Broken down, general fund $559.82, fire fund $33,924.71, cemetery fund $763.20, EMS billing $3,754.90, and road and bridge $2,016.96. Is there a motion to approve? Yes, I move it in bills. Is there a motion? Is there a second? I will second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote? Mr. Major? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. We will take a moment here and have our uh, esteemed guests join us. We'll go from ask, we'll go from right to left, and uh, ask you please to state your business. I am here, as well as Rob, to present Miami Township with this plaque for our grateful appreciation for your service and protection to the Bath Township residents for the fire service and EMS service that y'all provided up through the end of this year. I believe we're going on four years now. I think so, yeah. So we would like to present this to you at this date for the end of the year because that is when our contract is at. <laughs> but we would like to present this to y'all. Well, thank, thank you very you much. so much. Mm -hmm. for helping us out. It's been our pleasure. Thank you, Chief. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. That's very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you so much. For us. Thank you so very much. Well. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if you don't mind, we'll like excuse us. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> <What? It's a laughs> we're, not, we're in an uptown chimney. <laughs> Call us anytime. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Just to observe, thank you. Oh, okay. Um, gentlemen? I'm, I don't really have anything specific, just kind of following up from the last meeting and how you think you guys will proceed with next steps or um, regarding the, the solar stuff. I know Don wasn't here and, and yeah. whether he's had a chance to watch the video right. or not. So. Uh, I'm not sure of that either. Uh, again, as you say, he wasn't before and it still isn't this meeting. Uh, we are still trying to gather some information from our legal uh, uh, councils regarding what can and can't be done with um, restricted area language in SB 52, um, how permanent the restrictions are, that sort of thing. We're trying to get a feel for that. So when we get that, when we're satisfied with we have enough, um, then we're going to work on it some more okay. as a group. All right. That's all. I was just curious what you guys thought for your next process would yeah. be. Yeah. Um, there was, you know, then the discussion of is, is it reversible? Can we, but, I mean, one of the main things is it's hard to plan with companies breathing out and next. Is there any way to give ourselves space to do that? I was just wondering if you could say a few words about are you following what Xenia, I mean Cedarville is doing? I, I'm confused about when they say the restricted large solar in the in the township, in the Cedarville township, does that mean, res what exactly does that mean? So as, as far as OPSB is concerned, because Don was trying to explain it to me. So it's 
only pro it only applies to projects that would go through the OPSB process. So that's any for solar, that's any project of 50 megawatts or greater, which is you know 350 acres or so. Uh, they, there were some ballparks in our in the last meeting that you guys had, um, and it it doesn't apply to anything smaller than that. That what they call community scale or um, you know residential solar. Does that answer your question? It does. Uh, it, uh, Paul's was trying to get at some kind of point, finer point that I didn't understand. But, so any other, anything under that would just be our looking ahead and doing our own, our own zoning, part of our own zoning plan. Well, I'd have to look into it a little bit farther. We've been so focused on utility scale that um, I haven't even looked into that yet. But uh, as far as I know, it's not under the OPSB purview at all. It, they are projects that are still eligible for pilot, um, the payment in lieu of taxes program because I believe that goes down to, I think, 20 megawatts or more is eligible for the, the tax incentives associated with the pilot. But as, as far as I know, it's local mm -hmm. jurisdiction, but it's certainly something that has to be looked into further. Yeah. I believe you're correct that under 50 megawatts uh, would be uh, mm -hmm. controlled by local zoning, and I think we should encourage our local zoning uh, board to start taking a look at those because, and uh, if I don't say it now, or if I don't say it later on the standing committee reports, regional planning is reviewing multiple local township zoning ordinances on specifically community scale solar and you know all the ins and outs of what's applicable and those sizes and setbacks okay. and all this that stuff, which, which we don't have any of at all. Yeah, that would include the maps of what we. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have another question. Vesper made a um, claim at the meeting about um, how local schools would benefit from mm -hmm. a large-scale project. Do you have any numbers? I, I, I'm trying to imagine how they... Uh, it's been a long time put, since I've looked at numbers, but the way they, what they're talking about there is through the pilot program, which is actually a tax incentive, so it's a reduction in the taxes that they would otherwise pay, um, that forces some of the, it, it kind of guides where the money can go from the county to the townships. And I'm not an expert in that. You probably know more about it than I do as far as general fund and how that works. Um, but it's a, it works out to be a $7,000 payment, $7,000 per megawatt per year. Um, and then another $2,000 can be negotiated. And it's uh, dispersed, at least a portion of it is dispersed based on how your tax structure currently is set up. And then um, I don't remember what the rule is about the extra 2000 That might be general fund, I, I don't know. Uh, it's been a while since I've looked yeah. at that yeah, stuff. Sure. Um, but what they're talking about there is a portion of that, especially if a school tax is set up, um, would go, would go to the, based on those percentages would go to the schools. Yeah. Thanks. Um, and no updates on the Kingwood project? I haven't heard Just anything. I know there's a board meeting in December. Mm -hmm. uh, we ha I have not seen the agenda for that yet, so we don't know if Kingwood is on there. Mm -hmm. Thanks for answering those questions. I appreciate yeah. it. Okay, we'll move forward to correspondence for the evening. For a period. Um, on Monday, earlier today, which I unfortunately was not able to attend the webinar, there was a, a raised deep briefing from ODOT regarding the Clifton Corridor potential funding on, on a new bike path. Um, we'll have to find out from other members how that went. Uh, as a RPCC commission reminder for, or for tomorrow's meeting, question about uh, cemetery operations from Green um, Glen Forest, how far in development business update, email about um, some uh, local uh, people weighing in about the solar and wind utilities, uh, Otarma election board of directors, the Tubbs of Land Trust fall newsletter, uh, bond rate uh, request for from the auditor for 22, uh, state of Ohio monthly financial report for, uh, for October, Invitation to Homings presentation, which I believe uh, Marilyn will speak on uh, in a little bit. Um, uh, Health Department's COVID-19 test giveaway, which was today. Uh, 
I'm sure that was well attended. Uh, Ray Hensley's holiday party invite, uh, Hot Township Association's legislative alert. 41118, request to put the Yellow Springs flyer, uh, the equity flyer, on the township website for update. Um, unfortunately, it did not get on the website, and uh, the time for the applications has expired. But there was an overwhelming amount of applications for the funding uh, that was available, so that was successful with that. Uh, Ohio, Ohio Power Citing Board comments on overturning restriction out uh, OTA's November training offerings. Uh, OPRS education for members within five years of retirements and the uh, fund status for other status appropriation for this evening. Apparently, we kind of covered public comment on agenda items, uh, so we'll move to the fire department report. All right, Mr. Fire. <coughs> since our last, or since your last meeting, um, we've had 36 EMS incidents, four of which were Bath Township and 11 fire incidents, one of which was Bath. Got a surprising, we say one, one. Got a surprising uptick in car accidents uh, throughout the township, um, but nothing's, nothing's really serious. Um, uh, you've got resolution 2022-41 to reclassify one of our current volunteers to a part-time status for 12 hours a week. Peyton Cooper will be filling. There's currently an opening on um, um, a shift, it's an evening portion that's been open for a while. We've been filling it with uh, typically overtime. Mm -hmm. uh, so this will keep us from having to do that. So uh, we should be really excited. Mm -hmm. okay. Ready to take on the world and win. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd entertain a motion to adopt resolution 2241, reclassification of a township employee, fire department employee from uh, volunteer to full-time Peyton Cooper. Is there a motion? Enthusiastic motion for that. <laughs> we have an enthusiastic <laughs> motion. And is there an enthusiastic <laughs> second? <gasps> yes, I'm enthusiastic to <laughs> second that. Uh, any further discussion regarding this resolution? Hearing none, may we vote please. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Good. Thank you very much. Uh, just to update you on the brush truck, it's back in service after being repaired, after its encounter with a fire. Um, and uh, yay, Otarma is covering the claim. Uh, Sight on the scene, which is really nice. What was the cost total? You know, 5400 I think. Mm -hmm. Cedarville's is only 4900 so. Yeah, and they, we well, we're always them. better than Cedarville, yeah. you know, so, we can do things bigger. Uh, <laughs> but I spoke to the really nice pe people at Otarma, and uh, they are amazing. And they're sending a check to Fisher Shop for us. So we just paid them back to the So it's back in service and happy. So um, we have three new fire inspectors. Uh, we've got a Klein, Justin Turner, and Cassidy Brewer, all past fire inspector class. Mm -hmm. They're certified by the state. Mm -hmm. In accordance with our department policies, they are now eligible for a dollar an hour increase. Mm -hmm. I told them we would have to see when that would start now or after the first of the year. After you guys. <laughs> uh, they should be entitled to it now. I mean, okay. They passed and they are registered, licensed, whatever. Yeah, they are all certified, qualified, inspectors. Roar and ready to go. And that's part of the part of the plan. So, just so do you guys want to vote on that or, or just declare? Give them a raise. <laughs> It's up to you guys. They, and, you know, that's that's part of the employee manual that they're entitled to it when they them. Thank you very much for qualification. So. Make sure you know that. I will. <laughs> and they will um, they'll join our other four inspectors that you're going to have, so we're going to get to seven, which is very nice. And you can get out and do some inspections. A whole lot of buildings to inspect this township. It's an update on our Department of Labor work. Um, mm -hmm. Assistant Chief Powell has been doing most of it, so that's nice. Um, but he is making significant headway on the administrative process. There's about a third of the way through, so uh, we've got a deadline extension to December 2nd, which is very nice. Um, on the other federal government re-registration update, the godforsaken SAM.gov re-registration. Uh, continuing to work with federal processing registry to 
get it. Um, this year, the federal government in their infinite wisdom, after giving us $5 million, decided that we have to have two-step verification for an account that we already have. Mm -hmm. The problem, of course, is, and hopefully, maybe we can write Is this when they want articles of incorporation? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> so, um, after saying that we were not incorporated, um, I'm wondering if I could access our safe deposit box and see if in there somewhere is our original IRS employer identification number the termination letter. If we have one of those, that will make us all. Um, I'll happily share you the key with you. Um, Thank you. Uh, although you're not on the list well, to okay. get well, in. Well, one of you could look at <laughs> But I have been through that box multiple times and has made a list of what's in there, and that's not in there. <laughs> that's not in there. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. uh, I'm sorry. And one of the problems that we're running into, because it's the federal government, they have us listed as Miami Township, comma, Green County. Mm -hmm. But if we have, if I submit anything that is even punctuation different from that, mm -hmm. they won't accept it. So. Don't forget your comma then. Okay. We're continuing to prove, try and prove who we are yeah. <laughs> and that we do exist with the five million dollars we gave us. So. Well, um, I say let them come and take that five million. Yeah. <laughs> See how easy that is. <laughs> It'd be a lot harder than a comma. Uh. <clears throat> Most annoying process ever. Mm -hmm. And then last but not least, definitely not least. Uh, we scheduled our holiday well, actually no, it actually it's not least, that's right, not last either. We scheduled our holiday party. Um, finally kind of wanted to wait and see it. Yeah, whether you're not. So even though it doesn't pay pay for this, but we figured it might just be bad for them. Um, but we're gonna follow up what we did last year and hold it at the barrel room at the brewery. Um, it was a great success and uh, significantly cheaper than previous years. Um, Wednesday, December 7th. We're the yeah. Not going to so. Great. Okay. Apparently, they don't teach that in school anymore. So. <laughs> well, we'll all look forward to that evening. I hope so. I mean, that could change depending if the caterer is not able to do it. But we'll see. Otherwise, I'll just you know make tacos or something. Mm -hmm. um, now, last. Mm -hmm. um, I had a conversation with, well, you were, but I had a conversation with Trustee Mutcher uh, last week about um, outstanding needs here in the fire station. And the first one that popped in mind were the staff lockers. Um, those were originally included in the construction, and then we they were turned into, uh, not turned into, but they became owner provided. Um, and throughout the year, we've kind of held off on because they're not free, unfortunately. Um, I looked at the state of Ohio contract and Department of Administrative um, Services has a contract for lockers with a company in Pennsylvania, but they only sell those fancy schmancy like wood gym lockers that are about five thousand bucks a pop. Yeah, wow. for what we need. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so I went old school and we found um, schoollockers.com or something because of course there's a website for absolutely everything, yeah. and we can purchase on the state's school contract price, which gets us. Three sets of lockers, 24 lockers for the staff, with shipping, coming assembled too, because yeah, that's good. 2,505 bucks mm -hmm. and 23 cents. Mm -hmm. Approximately, it's going to depend. The shipping kind of may vary depending on the supply chain. I'm assuming these come from the United States. I didn't look to see. <laughs> Hopefully, they're not coming by ship. But um, and well, they would be in the dark gray color, not that <laughs> very beige. Yeah, school color. Well, that's very interesting because this might be a new career for you is, is estimating cost because, as I recall, that was just about what you thought these were going to cost. Yeah, I was kind of surprised. Yeah. <laughs> usually you're... <laughs> usually <laughs> way off and way under or over. Yeah, the, well, uh, uh, not usually under. Are these replacements? No, we don't have any currently. But you, you don't have any lockers, you just kind of throw something. And yeah. It's on the floor, actually. Pretty much, yeah, the guys just got... Mm -hmm. They've kind of like... Conceptualize where their lockers could be. <laughs> so that's where the bags go <laughs> and throw stuff on the floor, which is kind of funny. But uh, one of the guys wanted to put tape marks out and pretend mm -hmm. that was like that. That's just uh, And this company has been in business. I mean, they do a lot of business for schools in Ohio, so they are reliable. Well, I would move that we use general fund money to purchase these lockers for the poor, suffering volunteers and staff. EMT uh, and firefighters that have been 
forced to live off the floor <laughs> in uh, excess of almost a year. At least I'm sleeping. Yeah. Did you have to vote on it? Yeah. And did you move? I or just moved. You, moved. Eight eight you certainly could. I never know if it, somebody besides the chair has to move. No. Whichever. I second. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll vote again. I'll <laughs> <laughs> withdraw my supply, thank you, until we vote. <laughs> I don't think Don would mind that we voted without him. I don't think. <laughs> what else you got? That's all? Really? Yeah, that's it. Uh, okay. Was the repair people able to uh, buff out all the corn stock marks or not? Uh, that wasn't on the repair list. The truck was gone before I even got a chance to look at it. The staff was crack efficient on that one. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't really even know. And uh, I thought they had sent it down, you know, to get an estimate first. And Fisher called me. I said, so what's the estimate? I'm like, what's well, done? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, I just wanted to luckily I'll turn around. Oh, and actually, good news on that, though. Uh, Chief Miller from Cedar Roll emailed Danny and I today, and uh, the company the insurance company that insures the crops at that fire that were lost mm -hmm. um, will pay one uh, pay up to two fire departments who responded up to seven hundred and fifty dollars reimbursement for their for our efforts. So uh, Chief Miller, knowing that we had sustained damage to our truck as well, uh, gave them our name. So we called them our name. We should be able to get them deducted and covered. Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. So that'd be nice. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. For the audience, there was a smoldering um, cornfield, and we drew, drove one of our vehicles into it. And uh, yeah, there was a one month away, November November sixth. There was a very large uh, cornfield fire in Cedarville Township that they ended up calling twelve different fire departments to assist with. Uh, it burned about twenty five acres. It was about a mile and a half long, and both our brush truck and Cedarville Township's brush truck uh, were damaged when the wind shifted and fire shifted and blew back onto the crews. So luckily, nobody was injured. Um, the wind then apparently shifted back into the way and blew the fire away. So they lucked out. But uh, our truck was damaged, and I thought it was a lot worse than it would be. So I'm glad that it uh, turned out to so. <coughs> Me too. Yeah. yeah so. That's it. That is all. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sext administrator, whatever else. Coconut. <laughs> You're up. Since the last meeting, we've had one barrier, one clipping. We're going to have another one tomorrow. Full barrier. One clipping. One clipping. Uh, supposedly, I'll be meeting with Mr. Jinks, the electrician, next week after the holidays. Good. We're going to send a date to the call the first of the week. So. The electric will go. Okay. He's hard to get a hold of than cardiac surgeons. They all nobody calls you back. So, so we're, we're still plugging away. Uh, do you think I should uh, cut the grass up there one more time? Yeah. Okay. okay. And we're still kind of finalizing that south drive cleanup. We've got most of the stuff out there. Get moved over to trim that. Yeah, that's good. What do you do with it? What did you do with it? The debris? The pit. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. Maybe, I thought about just piling up and burning it like that. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit as we went and hauled it. But do you, do you have that part cleared? Oh, all that was done. No, I just need to take the big one and kind of clean up the other brush. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about kitchen stuff? Talking about the groove. Secret. Sorry, I'm not sorry. I know. Good. So potentially sometime in the spring, you might be able to set a, a basic gravel anyway. Sure. Yeah. Maybe. In the future. Maybe before the season hits, as you know, we're mm -hmm. rolling. Yeah. March, April, for some years. Yeah, sure. What else? That's it. Go no, ahead. Um, all right, flip over to, to roads. Mm -hmm. What you got? Well, we've been working in the township, township garage, you see, housekeeping. Um, I thought you made 
quite a good start. We're starting. Mm -hmm. We're rolling. Yeah. We'll stop it there. Mm -hmm. oh, that's, that's good. No, you, you know, I think you've done an excellent job for a, a week's time. Well, we're full today. I'm going to go back and rearrange the issue. Been cleaning and pitching and now we'll be back to kind of move mm -hmm. that one cabinet down with the other two and mm -hmm. press up up to the other you know, the welding and stuff. You know, if you got rid of those grease tanks which haven't been used in fifty years, you could put a nice set of shelves in there. Well I'm gonna move that one cabinet and I thought put it down with the other two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean that if you move the, the right. grease yeah. tanks, you have plenty of room there too. Uh, I don't know what you do with the darn things, but... Well, one's grease and one's grid, so... Mm-hmm. I don't think I can find the right one. Okay. <coughs> but yeah, that's what we're doing. Okay. I need to go over some ditches probably next week, like... Hydro needs my age. Well, we'll see about that. We'll ask our road inspector know what the conditions of those roads look like. Right. It's tall out there. I was looking at it. And it's really needs to be cut back. And then okay. Larkin's had some crops left. What part of that road is that? The whole thing. The whole thing from 68 all the way to east to east beyond the bridge? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll take another look. Okay. Let it in. Let it in. Brandon is going to be off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The young lady is going to be there. Yeah, we talked about that. I mean, I will be going the 7th through the 12th. We have to that Thursday. Mm -hmm. Or the Christmas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. No, I've made any drug time before you can buy the drug deal. They're working on it, are they? I hope so. Uh, I'll save my breath. You have anything other than what's in your hand for us? Yeah, the resolution is something we're kicking down the road. Oh. What's the resolution 2242? Yeah, well, we're not going to kick it down the road. We're going to do it, but we're going we're gonna to do it. Do it. Um, you know the annual resolution that we do every year for roads? Um, are there any roads that you feel that uh, have to have major repair done mm -hmm. immediately? Yeah. There's some potholes showing up there and there, so probably good to it. Yeah, no. Okay, so we'll mark on condition okay to I think so. all of them. Okay. How is this different from the, the big assessment we do at the beginning of the year? Uh, it, uh, not much, except we have to do it now. Okay. And we're not, gonna, we're not planning next year's right this minute. Okay. We don't usually plan it. It's, it's paperwork. It's bureaucratic stuff. Okay. It's something we have to do. It, yes. Okay. Pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 5571.13, okay. <coughs> okay. the foregoing report has been spread upon the Journal of the Miami Township Trustees by. I entertain a motion to approve Resolution 2022-42, which is the annual <coughs> report of Township Roads for 2022. We're approving it because we've decided we're good now. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. That sounds good. I move that we do so. Okay. The motion is there a second. Yes, I second. Uh, any further discussion regarding this resolution? Hearing none, move vote, please. Mr. Mutcher. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. That's going to be the original, so I can sign it. We'll just move it along. Yeah, I was going to take it down there tomorrow. Anything else, Daniel? I have nothing. Would you like to add anything about? Your road inspection or I just anything in general? It's a gigantic dump truck around all the roads. Mm -hmm. It seems gigantic to me. It must have to you. They said there's a truck for me to drive to, to um, start to run the roads. Um, and it was easy. The only thing is you've got to keep track. you got to stay on your side of the road. Yeah, that's, that's uh, some of those I'm narrow, not, quite some tell those narrow roads. Uh, I'll, I'll forget about it, and oncoming traffic will, will be off, <laughs> way off on the side of the berm on their side, and I'll go. Yeah. Maybe I better move uh, over to stay. I pulled over every time somebody passed me on those roads. What's with Snipe Road? It seems about as wide as a bike path, a small bike path. It's always been that way. Mm -hmm. 
Do THU cars ever go past each other? Yeah, the north end. Yeah. Anyway, it was it was fun. Um, anyway, so Looking forward to getting to know the roads better. <laughs> you want to plow? You want to try your hand at plow? Yeah, I was thinking about it because you put a plow on the front of that, right? Sure. You have to get up in the middle of the night sometimes. Um, he, 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 doesn't one have to be certified or uh, we can, pass a he, test? We can get you right <laughs> <laughs> How many plows do you have? Two. Two. So if, if we get hit, you both go out and plow? Okay. Mm -hmm. You usually handle one or two of them. It's, um, it's a experience. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you done it? Too many. Too many? Yeah. Really? That many? Oh, yeah, that many. And, and too many, that's not too many, but it oh. is too many. One was too many. Well, so one was too many, and Mullen was. I, well, how many times have you done it? How many times have I rolled the truck halfway down into a ditch hmm. and had to have somebody come and pull me out at 4 a.m.? One too many. One too many. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Got it. It's a real, it's a real art. Let's put it that way. Uh, okay. <coughs> Anything else? No. All right, we shall move along to this law service. Yep. Well, guess what? There's a resolution amending permit appropriations. Resolution 2022-43, where is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to deeds of township. Now they were before the trustees authorize amending the following appropriations. Increase the uh, general fund, um, it's the zoning line for other expenses, which is basically um, um, paying um, paying for the zoning minutes to be created. I increase that by $200. Um, in the fire fund, hold on to your hats, kids. We uh, introduce, we uh, increase salaries by $50,000. And we increase operating supplies by $9,000. And EMS billing, um, Increased Medicare by $100. My township trustees authorize the fiscal officer to do so immediately. Is there a motion to approve Resolution 2243? Yes, I move. The motion, I will second the motion. Any further discussion regarding this resolution? Uh, hearing none, you vote please. Mr. Mujer? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Um, unfortunately, the Colin can attest that the salary situation is kind of getting hard right now because of a one, well, an employee who's accruing, that's using some blood sick leave right now, which you have to cover. Yes. So, the, so the, um, the, some of the overtime for some of these folks was kind of doubled their salary right off the bat this pay period alone. And this person who's, well, you tell, I mean, he's not, he's going to be out for a while, but he's. Yeah, we've got one guy out on. We'll probably turn to F and I'll leave, and then um, in this pay period, we also had the lieutenant out on a sick day, and then the paramedic out on two days of pre-approved vacation. So it was a, a perfect storm, as they say. Mm -hmm. And we don't, we just unfortunately don't have enough staff, deep enough bench to right. give it to people who don't have enough. You know, mm -hmm. I wish we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so payroll was probably what. maybe five, six thousand dollars, not more than usual. And we've got two, what, two more paper years to get through at the end of the year. And so we'll have to probably reappropriate before then. Well, this, this 50000 yeah. might cover it. It depends on how much, um, you know, how much more overtime they, we end up with again and so forth. And, and honestly, the fire fund um, is down to, well, there's not a lot, a whole lot of money left over in the in funds that are currently available. So. Might have to get some money from Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. Just it's clear. It, I, I, it's just, just, I just, you know, it's, I'm, I'm sure it's no surprise to to y'all, but that's all I had to say. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else? 
Uh, I'm going to move for an executive, de executive decision. Executive Do you want to vote on this first, then? Uh, yes. We've moved please. and seconded, so. Uh, on, okay. want, uh, on, the, on the appropriation. Yes, Resolution. Vote, please. Yes, Mr. Butcher. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes, thank you. Um, I would now move into uh, move, move into executive session with the purpose of employee uh, hiring, or hiring or discipline, all that general. All right. Is there a second? There's a second. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't realize we had to. Yes, we do. Officially, we have to do that. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Six. Six twenty-five. Five twenty-five. Oh, yeah. Five thirty-five. Five thirty-five. Let's do it. Come on yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Oh, turn it off. I guess we could. Did you turn that off? I didn't. <laughs> oh. I thought I saw you. It's part of your job. So you <laughs> After that one time. <laughs> So we're back in public session, uh, roughly 6, almost 40, 639. Uh, as a result of the executive session, we have decided with the um, uh, approval, I don't know if we technically do that, but I just want to look at the approval of Trustee Hollister, who's been advised uh, of the situation that we were going to speak with tonight, and he agrees that if the uh, fiscal officer would like to establish a budget uh, for a additional person to take minutes, uh, we would authorize that at a rate of $50 per set of minutes. Um, and this would be a, um, this would be, you have to establish a fiscal officer fund. And I don't know how to do that, but you can find out in the auditor somewhere. Uh, but they can't be paid out of anything other than a fiscal officer no. fund. I know, separate. And then money has to be appropriated into it, and et cetera, et cetera. I don't know whether that includes your payroll or not, so. Okay. Okay. Now, we shall move to the standing committee, the uh, regional planning. Uh, uh, Matt and, uh, as mentioned earlier, we went over two sets of solar uh, regulations for uh, Zini Township and Beaver Creek Township. So, so you're saying that, that they're amending their zoning re resolution to address solar and, and, mm -hmm. and the county's reviewing them now? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's obviously for <coughs> under 50 megawatts. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, for how would you call it, community solar or something like that. Uh, I don't know where your, uh, two of them were done or before, yeah. I, don't, I don't know where your reports are. Are you talking are. about standing committees? Yeah. Um, MBRPC, mm -hmm. by the grace of God, did not meet this, this, um, this November, they canceled their November meeting, so. And CASP, um, the Climate Action, group of parties within the township. Um, they're still looking for uh, <coughs> advertising, looking for a half-time uh, person to head that. That's about it. There's some other issues, but none, none worth bringing up today. Um, why is development done not here? Okay. That's it. Okay. Any new business? Um, I went to the um, Home Inc. Uh, they have announced their new big project, which is senior affordable housing. I'm going to get oriented. That will be our north next door neighbors. And I, they said they were going to have the, the pictures on their website. That's not up yet. I'd hope to share them with you. I have them on my phone. But oh, well, go ahead. Um, <laughs> it was a good presentation. Um, Maybe you have something I need to do. You, I forgot that you asked me for the PDFs. I got them from Emily, and I can send them to you. Oh, you do? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. But 
they're cute, and um, I have no idea. Did you get the feeling that they were fully funded, or they're, they're be working on fund, or not even close to being fully funded? No, they're they're about just under halfway funded for the first phase. For the first but phase. the whole thing is going to be like eight million dollars. Yeah, so it's and they've got about just under a million now for the first phase and four phases. So it's safe to say this is a dream and a plan. <laughs> and it's a beautiful dream. Um, and they, they have um, eight triplex and duplex, eight buildings that are rentals. They'll be affordable rentals for people 55 and older. And um, some of them are triplexes and some of them are duplexes. And they're, they're really cute. And uh, they, have, they got an architect up from up in Cleveland who wanted, that just wanted to make them look good. And, um, give them lots of texture. And um, and then 11 townhouses for purchase, affordable townhouses along the Marshall Street. So it was pretty interesting. Were there price see. points to those? Or, any, or anything? Price points? Did we get any price points? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. OK, so beautiful architecture drawings. In, in square footage estimates um, for for the living areas? There were, but I can't yeah. remember what they are on my head. Mm -hmm. yeah, like like the rentals were like 850. 850. 850. 850 square feet. Mm -hmm. For either one or two people. Some of them are going to be one person apartments, some will be two people apartments. Yeah. Um, so it was pretty cool. Um, and, and roughly the total occupancy? Uh, I can't quite do that math in my head with you. I think it's 32 total units, including the, the for sale units. Uh, I might have to, maybe it's 34, I may have to go back and look at it, but, uh, so, but I don't know what the occupancy of each unit is, because mm -hmm. you could have a two bedroom and have, I don't know, one mm -hmm. person in there, if that's what they wanted, maybe, but I don't know what they're, it's still so early. Yeah. And can you recall how much parking space they projected? So, uh, spaces. Well, this place right along our swale here was parking, mm -hmm. I guess, single parking all the way the length of from Herman to Marshall almost. I would call it. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. They had parking. I don't know if it'll be enough parking. They, 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 ever enough. they emphasized, you know, which is weird, they emphasized it's perfect for senior housing. It's right across from Friends Care Center. I didn't I guess I understand why that's perfect. It's a short walk. And short can you? And they <laughs> emphasized um, being near the paramedics and, and yeah, and um, it's a trifecta. Just build a bridge across the <laughs> right. I even thought you know a paramedic could stroll through the they have walking areas and be friendly with the people. Fill the detention pond up, put a few more ducks in there, and it's going to look like friends here. They're be perfect. <laughs> yeah, so um, I guess it's a go. As much as anything is already over here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They, they didn't get their the tax credits that they were hoping for the first couple of times, so mm -hmm. they have pivoted entirely to uh, a phase system and getting funding as they can. Right. And phase one is closest to us. It's um, right here on the corner of our park, the, the corner two, one, two, three, um, either duplexes and, or triplexes. Is the first would be the first phase close the stars so that was exciting that's all I have to say um, the only thing I had was I went to the uh, introduction of the new village township uh, mediation director um, Diane I don't recall her last name at the second I'm sorry uh, but she's uh, a well-background woman and seems to uh, be enthusiastic about the, pro uh, the program. Um, of course, the village mediation has been in business for like 30, 30 35 years, it's been a long time. And uh, it's been well accepted within the village and, and fairly well used, if, certainly at times. And, uh, like everything else, there's times when it was understaffed and it wasn't able to be utilized as well as it could or should have been. But it has, uh, in the in the recent past, been fairly active, and, um, and hopefully with the new director, um, it will be additional in the future. So, good luck to them. 
and it's open to village and township and township residents that have a, uh, an issue that they feel could be helped by a mediation or, or get referred to. Uh, they are, re and, and speaking of which, referred, they are referred from the police if there's a, you know, if there's an incident, <coughs> say, let's just pretend between neighbors uh, that they can't get along or there's a dispute about something, uh, but it doesn't rise to the occasion of a citation. Uh, it, it, usually it first goes to what's the police, what's it called, the out, Hill Springs Outreach, Community Outreach, Community Outreach. Community Outreach. Uh, Florence Randolph um, who's in charge of that and, and she tries to negotiate a settlement or a, or a solution to that and if that doesn't happen, uh, she will make a, a referral to the mediation group to hopefully uh, be able to help out whatever is going on. Uh, and of course that's all voluntary. You know, no one has to uh, become involved with mediation if they don't, if they don't want to, but uh, it is going to be there. And available, so good luck to them. So that's my new business. Any old business this evening? Jennifer? Yeah, it's good. It's my business. <laughs> I heard you spoke what? So I, I just well, you haven't been here in a long time, I figured, you know, shoot. <laughs> I haven't. I guess, I, you know, I should just say thank you for holding the meeting um, a couple weeks ago. You know, it is good to take the temperature of the township, the whole township. Yeah. Um, and I hope that you also recognize, though, that there are those in the township who will be more immediately and directly impacted by these developments than others. Mm -hmm. uh, that is an important factor in this particular case, just mm -hmm. because of the layout, mm -hmm. um, the, the dynamic of our township. So <coughs> I know you guys have already considered that, and I hope you continue to do so. Um, There's a lot of stuff to weigh on it. The more you get into there it, is. you know. It's it's a a it was easy at the very beginning, and you go, ah, how do we get rid of that stuff? Mm -hmm. It's a very complicated topic, yeah. and it's it's an emotional topic for a oh, lot yeah. of people, um, and it's been a long road, mm -hmm. a really long road. <clears throat> and a lot of a lot of the township residents already have a lot of experience with what you know you you encounter and what kind of situations you end up in because of that stuff. So that's that feeds that emotion. That mm -hmm. feeds, you know, and, and there are there are also a lot in the township who don't necessarily have any experience with it so far. So it's been interesting. Um, but I am grateful that you guys had that meeting. It was good to hear from everybody. And we're all it, just anxious. It, it may not be the last, too. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. The more we learn, the more we may want to have more uh, input. So yeah. can you, I know, can you see any possibilities of maybe a 50 megawatt um, facility done well in with some thoughtful, you know, placement and you know the only negotiation. The only way that I could ever see that happening is if it is community, inst if it's instigated, you know, and and homegrown, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but at the same time. Ha you have to ask the question, well, how much does the community need? Because, you know, does the community really need to build a utility scale level development mm -hmm. um, to support their needs? And I, um, Mr. Hollister, I think, asked a valid question when he wrote that letter to the Ellis Brooks News. So there's a lot to consider, a lot to consider. Um, and, you know, community scale solar, what's important about community scale solar is that it's community controlled. Um, it's not a, a company that doesn't even reside in Ohio, um, and you know the community is responsible for it, essentially. So, uh, to me, that's a better scenario. And uh, there's a lot of discussion about a win-win, and to me, community solar again is where the win-win is because you're still getting the renewable energy benefits um, without the outside influence of a corporation that doesn't really know our community, um, and also the outside um, process, if you will. That, that OPSB process, while they do cover a lot, right, it's, I mean, we've just been led around, you know, through that process, and it's taken hundreds of thousands of dollars, 
and years of time and, and effort to just be a party to that process. Um, and to have to endure that again uh, is unfathomable. Uh, unfathomable, really. I mean, it, it just is terrifying, truthfully. And community solar, I think, you, because you can go right to your township if you've got a problem, you know, uh, that's different. The resolution is different. The approval is different. Uh, the legal costs are different. <laughs> that's nothing, you know, insignificant. So. Yeah. A lot to consider. Do you feel a sense of urgency right now? Um, do you feel like the, the walls are closing in? They're, they're courting people? <clears throat> uh, they continue to court. Uh, we get updates all the time about companies reaching out to landowners uh, for new leases. Uh, that has not stopped. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the, con the projects continue to spread throughout the state. So there is no, I've seen no evidence of it actually slowing down. Um, so it will still be there. That's still happening. Now, where I feel the walls closing in is we do have an opportunity here <coughs> to basically stand up as a township and say, well, this is what our zoning says, and we'd like to be able to solidify that with the OPSB, because that's what it does. That's what Senate 52 does where we, we have the opportunity to do that now, but that opportunity may not always be there because there is already talk of um, attempts to repeal Senate Bill 52. Well, that's what, what I don't get. Who would do that if the same people hold the majority in Congress? I mean, not Congress, in, in our state legislature. I don't know. I'm not tied in too well yeah. with the whole legislature and, and all of that. I try to avoid politics as much as possible. Um, but there the are... There's a in your backyard. Yeah. Well, it's more complicated than that too, but, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah. there are already discussions about trying to repeal it. I mean, there were discussions about that before it was even passed. So um, that opportunity to use that to define what we as a community will accept or not um, is closing. Does anyone else, if anybody else is here uh, about that issue, I want I, I was just. Jennifer is the one who um, shows up, basically, yeah. um, and um, I, I just thought I'd take the opportunity to ask her some of the things I've been thinking with, if anybody else, no, I okay, just want to make sure there won't be unfair airways. <clears throat> okay, anything else? Can I entertain a motion to adjourn? I so move. Second, we are adjourned by acclamation. Thank you all for coming. Hope you have a very nice evening. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, nice. Thanksgiving.